Hello Clover, here is my entry for your art con contest. Warning in advance, my voice is absolutely trash right now because allergies. So without further ado, here are the Fey Wings. Fey Wings live in another world below Pyria called Fairy and can come through to the overworld, as they call it, through portals located in fairy circles, the bottoms of lakes, and sometimes just super random parts of the Mud and Sky Kingdoms. The portals are closely monitored by a small subsection of the tribe called the Portal Guard, who try to protect the world of fairy from discovery by dragons from the overworld by limiting the numbers of travelers that can cross through and enacting an age limit that says they must be over 20 to cross over. But not just fey wings live in fairy, they also have animals in there that they have to keep in. Because they're very similar to the ones on the overworld, except for some very key ways, namely magic. So, weird stuff ensues whenever regular dragons meet them. Fey wings have long insectoid wings and, and spines that always end in little frills. They can also have little butterfly-shaped frills on their tail, two pairs of horns, and antennae. These likely came from a common ancestor with silk wings. As for personalities, they can have anything ranging from the sweetest dragon you've ever met to absolute psychopaths who are trying to trap you in fairy forever. Oftentimes, fey wings will appear in the upper world looking for trouble. Some will distract dragons and get them lost in the woods. Others buy things in fairy gold that will turn into other objects that are usually worthless after a few hours. Or some will even sneak into homes and move furniture or steal super random objects. Fey wings have abilities that vary by the dragon. Some can shapeshift or put others to sleep through dance, cast strong illusions, or even communicate telepathically. They can't have animus magic as they have never mated with any dragons that carry that gene. They can be named after mythical creatures, sweet substances, and features in fairy. Now to talk about the character I made. Her name is Honey, and she was born deep in the woods of fairy, somewhere below the Sky Kingdom. She leans more onto the sweet end of the personality spectrum and is extremely curious about the above world. But she's not old enough to be allowed through the official portals, so she sneaks around the forest, looking for a way up to Pyria. One day, she was creeping through a small clearing when she saw something, something that she'd been looking for, an illegal fairy wing, a small one just beginning to form, but it would work. The tiny circle of mushrooms wouldn't allow her to fit most of the supplies she wanted to take, but she had enough. Late at night, she slipped out of the house and over to the small ring. It was a tight squeeze, but she managed to fit her entire body inside of it without crushing any of the mushrooms. Um, how do I do this? Was it saying something, or like, tapping the mushrooms? Honey muttered. She tried all of that. It didn't work. And she kept trying to travel until she eventually fell asleep inside of the ring. When she woke up, she could tell something had changed. There was a large boulder in front of her. Wait, did it work? She yelped. Suddenly, Honey shot up and out of the trees. She sped out a leaf, a pyrene leaf. She soared over to the canopy. Wait, was that smoke? She flitted towards the smell and ended up finding a small village of mostly hybrids hidden in a tight ravine. Honey spied on the town for a while until she used her magic to disguise herself as a silkwing hybrid of some kind, and no one really questioned her about it. Slowly, she began to meet some friends, a leafwing hybrid named Ebony, a mudwing seawing named Darter, and of course, Arane, a mostly sandwing dragon with long wings covered in strange white splotch markings. Arane was the first to notice that something was a little off about Honey. She couldn't enter... Homes where rowan branches are growing over them, touch dragons wearing iron jewelry, or even seem to see dragons wearing green things. Weirdest of all, she always slightly freaked out when she heard bells. She tried talking to Ebony and Darter about it, but neither of them would believe her. So eventually, RNA went to confront Honey about it. She snuck behind Honey, winding through the trees until they reached the clearing, the very clearing that held the fairy circle. Arne hid and watched Honey curl up into a ball, slightly crushing a mushroom with one of her wings. 
For the first time, RNA noticed the strange dangling wisps coming from Honey's wings and wait. Was that a second pair of horns? Um, what are you? RNA burst out. Honey yelped and turned around. Aaron, it is not what it looks like. So what is happening? I just see my friend looking completely different in the middle of the woods doing something. So Honey tried to explaining, and eventually it seems like RNA might have gotten it. You need to tell Ebony and Darter, she hissed. But what if they need to know? I guess. So Honey told them, eventually, at RNA's insistence. It took them a little while to get used to the fact their friend was from another world, but they came around, somehow. Meanwhile, in Fairy, dragons had noticed Honey's absence. They sent out parties into the woods and eventually found the Fairy Circle. But the crushed mushroom had rendered it useless, and they couldn't pursue her further. Through that entrance, at least. Instead, the team went to another nearby Fairy Ring, in the woods by the Skywing Palace. It took a long time, but eventually Honey ventured out too far, and they caught her, dragging her back down into Fairy. But before they did, she had time to call her a little note. Arne was walking through the woods. Her friend had disappeared several weeks ago, and she had no idea why. But she was determined to get her friend back. She spied something out of the corner of her eye and whipped around. There was something written on the tree. Arne, Darter, Ebony, if any of... You find this, they found me. I didn't fully realize at the time I did anything wrong, but when it did, it was too late. I broke it. I'm back home, I guess. Don't try to follow me. They monitor. And then it ended. Arne had no intention of following her friend's warning. She knew where Honey was now, and she was going to go save her. So, um, yeah, if you watched this far, I am sorry I went ham on world building, and I might do a part two if I feel like it. So, uh, bye.